I love it when you stop by. It makes doing these worthwhile. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday. It is February 5th. Now, what I do on this show is I just share my due diligence with you on hot penny stocks. Stocks under five bucks, I got two things going for them, a hot chart and a hot piece of news. I figure between those two things, you've got a stronger likelihood of having a stock that's going to run. And these are the sort of stocks I look for and I share with you. And I've got one for you right now. This is Spooz Inc., ticker SPZI. Now, Spooz was their old name. They tell us down here they're changing their name to JP3E Holdings, also known as JP Energy Group. Now, the chart isn't in any sort of breakout. She is coming back from a dip. She was running hard. Oh, my God. At the beginning of December, she was on the floor. Triple zero one. And the very first day she decided to move, she went over a thousand percent. And she has been climbing ever since then, hitting over 13,000% since December 8th. And now she's got huge news. I mean, it's gigantic. The company just had a change of control back in early December. And immediately they started executing these contracts that were putting revenues on the books. 90 million, 300 million. Excellent. Then they come out with a piece of news today that dwarfs their year-to-date revenues. So Spoo's finished the day at 0071 with almost 34% gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. Got those validated pieces of information we're always looking for. When you're trading a pink, you don't get any validated information. Can't even trust the financials. Those are just numbers the management passes off to us. Everything we get is just being passed off to us by the management. These two green ticks are the only validated information verified by an unbiased third party, the OTCMarkets.com. So this doesn't look bad in that regard. They tell us she's a shell risk. This means she's in business doing something, but she's not declaring any revenues. We'll see if that's true here in a second. So what is JP3E Holdings about? Well, they tell us that they target three industries, energy, eatables, and educational real estate. JP Energy Group, their primary purpose is in buying and selling food, such as sugar, chicken paws, multiple agricultural products, and other related commodities. Now, I thought this was another company that I had already covered, and I looked it up, and we talked about it in a live stream, but I remember pictures. <laughs> chicken paws, folks. You don't forget chicken paws. I had to look it up. There is a difference between chicken feet and chicken paws. Chicken feet have some of the leg. Chicken paws, it's just the foot. Nothing else but the foot. And we looked at a company that had some huge orders going over to China. I'm talking hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, this company is also selling them to China as well, along with other goods. They also tell us that JP Energy Global is sourcing and supplying competitive light natural gas, I believe that is, to China and Europe in cooperation with its partners based in the Middle East. Okay. And their third one, JP3E, within the education sector, has residential amenities and real property located in New Jersey with a close proximity to a daycare facility. So that's what they do. The news really is all about the food that they have been exporting here. So what was the relative volume around the company today? A little less than normal, dropping from 75 million, definitely not under the radar, to 73 million. Share structure for the company, I hope it's good. I haven't looked. Oh no, I don't like it. Outstanding share count is pretty high. It's just shy of 6 billion. 5.7 billion shares. And all they have to put on the market is 5.8 billion shares. They have virtually all of them on the market, which isn't a good thing. This is like a bank account or credit. They've used up everything they've got. If they needed to make some deals, they couldn't do it. If they needed to make some money, they couldn't even do a public offering. Not that I'm excited about them doing that, but they can't do that. So they either need to do a reverse split to pull some of these shares back into their bank account called the authorized shares, 
or they'd have to increase their authorized share count. Either way, it isn't going to be good for us. The restricted shares, that is to say how many the insiders own, about 347, 48 million, and we get all the rest, about five and a half billion shares in the float. Ouch. Taking a look at those financials, we're not going to see anything here, not on the annual, not on the quarterly, for two good reasons. First off, she is a shell risk. She isn't making any money, but more to the point. They had a change of control in December. There's new management, new business here. And as you're going to see in the news, they are doing millions of dollars worth of business. But there hasn't even been a financial on since they took over the company. So we're not going to see anything here. Even the balance sheet is empty and bleak. We got nothing in the bank. We've only got $10,000 in assets. We know it's thousands and not just 10 because we got to add three zeros to any of these numbers. Liabilities, we got about 95,000. So back then in December, we were holding a bag of about $85,000. But this is all old news. It has all changed. I'm very eager to see a financial come out. Taking a look at the disclosures, nothing to be seen here. We have no dis new disclosures since 2008. So let's dive on over to that news. Now we do have some good news over here and I'm going right back to the change of control they tell us they completed the primary acquisitions and change of control on the 20th of December. Then they tell us on the 29th of December, they had already executed three commodity contracts for an equivalent of $90 million. You're talking in nine days, they brought in $90 million. Then on the 5th of January, Five new fully executed commodity contracts year to date total is now $303 million. In less than a month, this new management has brought in $303 million. That's huge, folks. The company was making absolutely nothing before. Then we've got an interesting piece of news here that came out on the 19th of January. The company secures U.S. Department of Homeland Security the EB-5 program and procures the acquisition of SIG International. Now, the way it really works here, they acquired SIG International, which has a long-standing relationship with the Department of Homeland Security's EB-5 program. And because of that, now the company's got all of that as well. And the big deal about it is, is that SIG International has a lot of connections, especially overseas. So this is supposed to open up the door for them in a big way. And then the catalyst, the news that came out today, folks, the company now being called JP3 Holdings has a new $617 million fully executed sugar commodity contract. $617 million for one contract. This is more than double their entire year-to-date revenues of 303 year-to-date. That wasn't even a month. And now we are, what, it's less than two months. And what's that bring it up to? If this is 617, we had 300 back there. We're looking at $920 million in two months. Can that possibly be right? Jumping into this piece of news, they tell us that the company, uh, JP Energy Global, a wholly owned subsidiary of JP3 Holdings, formerly called Spoos, is pleased to announce the execution of a sugar commodity contract valued at $617 million. The contract is $47.5 million a month for the next 12 months, which will total $570 million. The additional trial shipment brings the yearly total to $617.5 million. The origin of the shipment is from Brazil, South America, as with our previously announced Chicken Paws commodity contract. Now that our team on the ground in Brazil has completed the execution of the sugar contract, it is prepping the shipment of the Chicken Paws contract to China. Shortly after, we'll begin prepping for the execution of our sugar contract shipment. More details to follow. JP Energy Global is registered with the Overseas Exporters of Imported Foods with the General Administration of China Customs. This is what allows authorization for the company to ship goods into China. Folks, this is a huge deal. They are selling food to China, the largest population in the world, and every single person has to eat. 
it's not like shoes where half the people are going to wear your shoes and the other half will wear the other brand. No, every single person has to eat. And they're selling lots of different commodities over there. Chicken paws, which are a big deal over in China. Sugar. And as I said, add those two contracts, add all their contracts together. We're looking at just shy of a billion dollars. Look, folks, if I'm misreading this, it's because they misprinted it. Now, to be honest, I have not done a deep dive and gone through every piece of news here. But when you tell me you have executed contracts for $90 million, five new executed contracts for a total of $300 million, then say you have a new contract for $617, I can do the math. That is just over $900 million in two months. If that is an explosive catalyst, I don't know what is. And the chart looks like it's ready to break out again. Now for the fun part, the charting. You like the chart, don't you? What? Charting's the best part of due diligence. So we're looking at SPZI, Spoo Zinc, and we're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So I got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. Our low bubble, triple zero one, hit, well, pick a day, any day. <laughs> For months, she just kept landing on that triple zero one over and over again. The absolute lowest price you can buy a stock for on the open market. And then, for unknown reasons, she exploded on December 8th. Look at all the volume that came in on that day. And though that price bar doesn't look all that big, that is a 1,300% bar. It was down there at triple zero one, and she jumped up here to double zero one three. She fell back to the nine and began her uptrend. She ran all the way up to halfway through January where she hit a high of 1.2 cents. You're looking at 12,000% gain since she started this run. She fell back to the 50, tried to hang on to that for about a week, slipped underneath it. I don't know why, but today she hit a low of 005 and on the news she bounced up to 0086. You're looking at over 60% bounce there. And she fell back to about uh, 007374 right on top of our 50-day SMA. So she's got really nice placement. The SMAs up here are a bit boggled up. Our 20s coming down, our 9s coming up. And our volume is light. I would have expected a lot more volume on news like that. A contract that's twice as big as all the revenues they've generated thus far Maybe it'll catch up tomorrow. Osculators say she is building up some strength right now. We got an imminent crossover on our PPO, percentage price osculator. You read this just the same as the MACD. MACD's already had a crossover working towards a signal line. We got green bars coming into the picture now. And our RSI has dropped a little bit from about 57 down to 53. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was bouncing off of the 50 here, staying on top of it for quite a while, and then lost her footing and fell down to the 200-day SMA, actually dipping underneath it to that low of 0047. Came back up, was pretty secure up here, and then all these big SMAs came and pushed her down underneath, and then the news came today and lifted her up from that 005 to 0086. And then she's fallen back and she is right on top of the 200 day SMA right now. As I said, she's getting herself good placement. Our oscillators, uh, they're even right now. Our PPO is going sideways, our MACD is going sideways, and our RSI is dipping a little bit. She's fallen from 68 down to 55. That's the lowest I wanna see my RSI. Take a look at that five day, five minute. So she's hanging around the 200 day SMA here. Then she slipped when all of these SMAs were pushing down over the 200. She was pushed down with it. Hitting this low of 005, bouncing real early, pre-market, hitting a high here just at the start of the day of 0079. She pulled back, keeping most of her gains. Looked like she was gonna continue and she did. Pushed up to that 0084. Off of that, she has fallen through all of her SMAs and looks like there's a strong possibility she's going to come down to this 200. Now, let's take a quick look back at the, say, 15 minute. Well, it's 200. Everything is right there. So I don't like that one. Can we pick and choose our charts? Sure we can. 
it looks like it's coming down one way or the other. We've got a 20 down here at 0067. Looking at the 15 minute, 0067, that's where it's at. And our 200 here, 0066. I would presume this is going to dip some more down to 0066, 0067. And one of those SMAs on any one of those charts can be enough to get her to bounce. And considering the news and considering that they have more that they're going to be doing, I see this company as being one to keep on your watch list for a while. With news like that, we could get pops on and off a lot. And right now she is setting up. But like I said, Give her a chance to come back down. Our 200 is starting to climb right now, but we've got every other SMA pushing down. Looks like she is going to hit the 200 and most likely come underneath it like a rubber ball in water and then come back up. And when she starts coming back up, crossing the 200, that's when I would buy. After she's showing me, she's done falling and she's serious about climbing. So I do like SPZI. I think the money is the big catalyst here. That contract is just mind boggling, but there's more information to be known. So go do some due diligence before you invest in it. But then of course, if you're doing a day trade, maybe what I told you is enough. All we really need is a hot chart and a hot catalyst. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.